So look at how obvious this whole short little segment is. Here is the sheep. All of God's angels coming in to the mouth of the serpent. This is the mouth of the serpent. The whole thing is a dead sheep. It's also a male penis right here. There's the penis. You turn it upside down, it's the female reproductive system. So male right side up, female upside down. Male energy is up, female energy is down. So here's the canopy right here. There's a locust on it. There's a dragon on it. The, the canopy represents the flesh. So here is the, here is the she angels coming into the system. The canopy represents the flesh. There's locusts that are in the pit. Satan is the king of the locusts. The serpent race is the one that starts the whole host body system, twin female energy. And now watch this short video. The system is designed by 2X energy, twin female parthenogenic energy from the pit. It sets the trap, which is down. A host body system that's the original, that the spiritual essence is down. I wanna go back, I wanna show you something. The Adidas original commercials, why are they all hanging upside down with the X's on their chest? Why does Miley, uh, here's another one. Why are they all upside down with the onk? A host body with the Egyptian iconography. System that the original, that the spiritual essence is down. Marina Abramovic, that's who Zelensky right here just asked. Did you know Vladimir Zelensky uh, wants Marina Abramovic to be the ambassador from the United States to the Ukraine. Do you know how crazy that is? Do you know how completely insane that is? Marina Abramovic to be the ambassador to the Ukraine. She's a witch. Then the angels that are from above and they are the lights, they are the stars in the sky. Their spiritual essence is male energy. So they come into the system, which is male and female genitalia. I'm gonna pause that. Right side up, it's a penis, and when you turn it upside down, it's the female reproductive system right here. Here's ovary, fallopian tube, ovary, fallopian tube. Uterus, cervix, clitoris, and then opening to the vagina right here. All you got to do is just turn it the other way, and it's the male reproductive system. So all I did is rotate this right on. This is the axis point. You got male and female right side up and upside down. This is not arguable. This is not arguable by any means whatsoever. I'd like to see somebody mount their... Uh, biblical argument against it go ahead the bible says that the truth is what judges us if the truth is inverted in the system well if you haven't seen the truth if you haven't turned the system upside down to see the truth how did you ever know the truth you didn't by definition it's the most simple obvious thing in the world and so that will judge you the truth judges us. Jesus is the truth. You get it? So if you didn't get converted to Christ in you, you're judged by definition. Okay, let's play this whole thing from the beginning again. Look at the imagery. Dead sheep, male and female reproductive systems, the mouth of the serpent. I mean, you got to be kidding me, right? And the canopy, the corner posts have locusts and a dragon and the queen of heaven on the corner posts. They worship female energy. They worship the virgin. The 
system is designed by 2X Energy, twin female parthenogenic energy from the Fed. Dos Equis. Vatican coin. It sets the trap, which is down. A host body system that's the original, that the spiritual essence is down. Then the angels that are from above, and they are the lights, they are the stars in the sky, their spiritual essence is male energy. So they come into the system, which is male and female genitalia. That system transmutes the male energy into a locus from the pit. It is the most obvious thing with all the data that's been provided by the Lord. The Vatican has a guy in a slave collar, which is the beast system. That's an angel in a slave collar, and he gets turned upside down and turned into a locust, period. End of story. That is the most obvious thing in the world, and all the information bears witness to that being the truth. The serpent is the dragon. The dragon is Satan, a.k.a. the devil. So if you worship the Prince of Darkness, how perfect to do it right in front of everybody, right under their nose. destroy all of God's angels, I will rise above the stars of hell. That's the plan. Destroy God's angels. They get us in a host body system, and that host body system is attached to the pit through a demon. So as soon as the angel comes into the host body, he's got a body, but he's attached to the pit through a demon through one of your eyes. That's called the all seeing eye. And that attachment to the pit is what keeps the record against you and that record is used to destroy you. The fix is to turn back to Christ and get inverted. The word converted means turn quite around. You turn back to Christ, you turn away from your flesh and get converted and the two become one. We're gathered here today to mourn the loss of Mint Mobile's promotion of unlimited premium wireless for 50 So honestly, who would build a set of buildings in the shape of two serpents? Why would any group of people do that? Why does the Bible say, whoever loves the world or the things of the world has not the love of God in them? Well, if there's buildings on the earth that are built in the shape of serpents, one wearing a crown, birthing a serpent from itself, that's called parthenogenesis, virgin genesis. So in the beginning, if there's a form of reptilian beings that was able to form a host body system through parthenogenesis, 
that would be a good reason to build buildings in the shape of your god which is satan because satan is the serpent to make it even more telling why would the mouth of the serpent be giant dead sheep giant dead sheep made up of a bunch of angels. And even more curiously, why would that window turn into the female reproductive system when it's turned upside down and the male reproductive system right side up? So where male meets female makes an X, X marks a spot. And it shows that the angels are melting, turning into semen, which goes with the fact that there's male and female reproductive systems there. And oddly enough, the entire altar of all the angels that are coming into the mouth of the serpent, the entire thing turns into a giant insect. Why? So the large bug is harvesting that energy from the angels? There's this thing called the papal regalia. If you look at it, it's a very oddly carved piece of uh, marble or whatever the rock is. It's very strange. But if you look at it, you can't really tell that it's anything except two keys. But if you have the gift that the Lord God gave me, I can see it's obviously locusts. Who's the king of the locusts? Revelation 9 verse 11. They had a king over them, the angel of the bottomless bed. Apollyon, Satan. Satan, which is the serpent, is the king of the locusts. Well, that's perfect because the whole big giant altar, the mouth of the serpent, the vagina is a big bug harvesting angels in the form of semen. And then the post, the canopy, which in Ezekiel says, I will exalt my throne. Speaking about Lucifer, I will exalt my throne the word throne is canopy, and it means the flesh. I will exalt my flesh throne above the stars, a.k.a. princes of El, the Almighty God. That's why there's locusts coming out of the pit on the corners of the canopy. Why else would there be locusts coming out of the pit on the corner of the canopy why else would there be the queen of heaven on the corner posts of the canopy representing the flesh why else would there be a dragon on the corner posts because the dragon the serpent satan owns it all and they're doing it all inside of his buildings whether or not it's audience hall or whether or not it's the vatican proper they're both serpents who is the enemy of god's angels it's pretty obvious now, isn't it? Now you know why you shouldn't love the world or the things of the world. Because we're angels that got carried away captive into their system. If I could give my best friend anything, it would be what I'm giving you now. The truth of the Bible. Isaiah 7. There it is. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. You shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel is the name given to Jesus, prophesied the coming of the Messiah. You shall call his name Emmanuel. So Emmanuel, it's a conjunction of 5973 and Hebrew word 410. The first word, 5973, which is the Emmanu part, it says it means with us is. So now I'll go back. And then the second part of the word is Hebrew word 410, and it is El, the Almighty God. The name of the Almighty God is El. The Old Testament was, the Messiah is going to come. They're all waiting for the Messiah. You're going to call his name Emmanuel. Well, Joseph and Mary both had a vision. They were visited each by an angel, and they were both told when he gets here, you're going to name him Jesus. It's Jesus, actually. It means a self-existent, eternal Jehovah that opens wide. It's a product of a Hebrew conjunction. Because he opens wide the dungeon that we're in. Because your host body is that dungeon. So now to Isaiah 14. And we're going to go look at what Lucifer has been told. 
So Lucifer said, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne. Let's look at the word throne. To plump fill Apollos, to cover for clothing or secrecy, to conceal self. Let's look at the root of that word. To be covered with flesh. I will exalt my throne, my flesh, the place where I'm hiding, above the stars, the princes of God. L. See L, the Almighty God. There's no doubt that the one that Lucifer is out to arise above is L. Son of man, say to the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God. So the Lord God is the self-existent eternal Jehovah. Jesus is Yehoshua, the self-existent eternal Jehovah that opens wide. Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up. And thou hast said, I am El, the Almighty God. I sit in the seat, the population, the assembly, the dwelling place. I sit in the seat of Elohim, gods of the supreme God in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not L. Although you set your heart as the heart of Elohim. So the Lord God is telling Lucifer, hey buddy, you said you're El the Almighty God. You're not El. Although you set your heart as the heart of Elohim, and although you sit in the seat of Elohim, that doesn't make you El the Almighty God. Genesis 1, so Elohim created man in his own image. Elohim, gods of the supreme God. So Elohim created to cut down as a formative process. So Elohim created man in his own image. Okay, so here's the creation of man in the image of Elohim. It means to shade, a phantom, figuratively an illusion. Resemblance hints a representative figure, especially an idol, a vain show. Let me go to Isaiah again. Ready? How art thou fallen from heaven, the Lucifer son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Back to Genesis 1. So Elohim created man in his own image. Bara, to create, to cut down as a formative process. Okay, so what was his work? Elohim created man in his own image. In the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he them. So from Genesis 1, it says Elohim said, let us make man in our vain show. That's what it says. Consider the work of Elohim, for who can make that straight? The word straight means to equalize, to set in order, that which he, Elohim, has made crooked, turned upside down. And you know what the thing he turned upside down was? Us, our essence from above. When you come into the system, your, your essence of what you are, you get inverted. Because Lucifer's in the midst of you. You have to turn back to the Lord God and admit your guilt. Your guilty is charged. There's a double you. There's a good you and a bad you. The only thing that will ever work is a spiritual conversion where Lucifer's out and Jesus stands up in the middle of you. The Bible says, I have said ye are Elohim. Hebrew word 430 is God's is Elohim. I have said you are Elohim and all of you are children of the Most High. The Most High is El. Yon, and it means the Supreme Most High, but you shall die like men and shall fall from heaven like one of the princes, the magistrates, master, prince, head person that had rule. What makes this even more powerful is Jesus quoted the scripture. So you go down to John. So they're going to stone Jesus and, and they can't. He says, for what good works have I showed you that you're going to stone me for? The Jews answered him saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because thou, being a man, 
makest thyself gods. And Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law in Psalm 82, I said ye are gods? And then he says, If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scriptures cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified, and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. If I do not, if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe me not, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. There's a double you. There's a good you and a bad you. The original thing, the woman, it's the opposite of the Lord God's goodness. It's the exact opposite. Instead of light, it's darkness. Instead of love, it's hate. Instead of kindness, it's vitriol. When you get into a host body system, you have a superhuman angel, demon spirit that runs you. The Bible told you this in Ephesians 2 and other scriptures. It said, when you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, which is the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience, the word spirit right here is pneuma, superhuman, an angel, demon. The angel part goes, comes from above. The demon part comes from below. The demon part from below is female energy. The, the angel from above is male energy, our father in heaven. There's a king above and there's a queen below. Christ's purpose was to make one new man from the two, thus making peace. So doesn't the Bible tell us that the coming of the Messiah, the Christ, will be called Emmanuel? Isaiah 7, there it is. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. You shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel is the name given to Jesus, prophesied the coming of the Messiah. You shall call his name Emmanuel. So Emmanuel, it's a conjunction of 5973 and Hebrew word 410. The first word, 5973, which is the Emmanu part, it says it means with us is. So now I'll go back. And then the second part of the word is Hebrew word 410. And it is El, the Almighty God. The name of the Almighty God is El. We also know that the Bible says in Hosea that we will become sons of the living God. The living God, the God of life, which is El, again, the Almighty God. So let me ask you a question. Why does Genesis 126 say, So Elohim created man in his own image. Elohim, gods of the supreme God. So Elohim created to cut down as a formative process. So Elohim created man in his own image. Okay, so here's the creation of man in the image of Elohim. It means to shade, a phantom, figuratively an illusion. Resemblance, hence a representative figure, especially an idol. I'm gonna pause it there. I didn't realize it, it was trying to recycle. It's an eight minute video and it did 10 minutes. Um, if you watch this video that I just played for you that goes through Ezekiel, that goes through Isaiah, it goes to Genesis 1, Psalm 82. I've given you all the scriptures right here that you should be able to understand completely the understanding of the Bible now. And the spiritual gift the Lord gave me proves it. Uh, so the gift he gave me is a confirming witness to the word of God. Why do you think the Vatican's a snake? Why do you think when you turn the virgin the other direction, it's a it's a dead sheep? And if you want to see the truth, you got to invert the virgin. The virgin isn't just the virgin. It's the virgin and a dead sheep. It's two different things. And if you don't know it's two different things, you only know part, half of the, half of the, half of the reality. 
I guess is a good way to put it. Until you see the other half, you don't know the truth. That's all there is to it. It's that simple. Anyway, all right. I'll leave that up as just a little learning. This video right here is just the most obvious learning tool you could you could have for these scriptures. So anyway, and again, I am exhausted, guys. I'm I'm trying to just render the video that I just spent an hour and a half on. Just laying out more stuff. Alex and Alyssa just kind of giving their own uh, testimony about the ark. There's too many people that have this uh, uh, testimonies that just don't match at all, Jim and Karen. It's always Jim and Karen, poor Jim and Karen, poor Jim and Karen. No, 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 no. Not anymore. No more of that. That's enough.